Hello, this is Tom from anti-proton.com. Every few months I try to put out a video reminding folks of why it is that energy units are not a really good idea to use with a Geiger counter in most scenarios, and why you should be using counts per minute or counts per second. And it's one thing to say something, it's a, another important thing to actually prove it, justify it, show it. Because it's easy to make claims and it's harder to back them up. So let me try to back them up a little bit, you know, because even if I'm wrong, hey, at least I tried to back up what I said, right? But anyhow, uh, before I go any further, I'm going to uh, use, I hate using modern day expressions, but I'll use one anyway. It's called a shout out. I will shout out to anything, new, uh, anything radioactive. I'll put up a link for their little site. I bought this clock, which I think is absolutely the coolest thing on earth. It is a CDV 700, like the one right here, dial, but it is also a clock. See? You see me waving in it? Yay! Yay CDV 700 clock. Unfortunately, it's in energy units. Millirem per hour in this case, not rentgen, but rem. And counts per minute, the bottom one being correct. So let me put that away. Alright, so I'm going to prove it to you. Now, before I prove it to you with the radioactive material and the Geiger counter, first off, let us think for a minute what energy and, and, and counts mean. Counts mean nothing more than counts. This Geiger counter makes a tick for every single radioactive event it detects. Now, there's no lie about it. It detected it, it made a tick. There's no presumption there. More ticks, more radiation, less ticks, less radiation. It's pretty simple. I mean, like a you know five-year-old could pretty much get the gist of how that's working, right? Tick, 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 tick. Okay, so this unit here will not tick as often as this unit here. And so I've heard a lot of people say, well, wait a second, because these are both calibrated to cesium-137, their uh, readings in energy units, such as uh, uh, millirentgen per hour or microsieverts per hour or even you know grays or whatnot they're gonna match up probably because they're both calibrated with the same thing and that's probably reasonably true but there's a flaw in this premise just because they match up and just because it seems easier doesn't mean it's right because there's one thing that counts per minute doesn't convey that energy units do and that is a specific quantitative uh, analysis, if you like, uh, determination of the energy hitting the unit. For example, if I say that that this is putting out one, or let's say 10 uh, grays per hour, which would be enough to probably kill me, by the way, uh, that would be 10, it would be putting 10 joules of energy per kilogram of mass in my body. Of course, there's more math that goes along with that, you know, as it expands out and four power squared and all that sort of stuff. But anyway, the point is um, I'm conveying an actual dose or a dose rate or an equivalent dose and all sorts of other things come into play. And a lot of that's not true. Just because you can get the two of these to show the same result because they're both calibrated to the same thing doesn't mean that anything you're then reading is true because what's the point? Okay, so you found a unit that they both match up on because they both happen to intersect the same, you know, mathematically they intersect at the same point and so on. But that, does, that, that, that doesn't make it any more useful actually. It makes it easier for you because then you can just chalk it off and say to yourself, oh, well, that makes sense. They scale together. It's all great now. But it doesn't actually help you for anything because what do you actually want to know? Do you want to know the truth of the matter or do you want something that makes you warm and fuzzy? If you like warm and fuzzy, don't cut the Geiger counter on at all. All right, so we're reading two counts per second right now because we're in SI units right this second. Let's cut this thing on just for giggles. It's connected to a, a low energy scintillation detector, so it may it, this may be too high for it. Off the scale, times 10. Let's cut the sound down. Okay, so zero, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000. I just have that one on because I like it. Okay, so here we are in counts per second. Now, I, I want to test this. I'm going to take a cesium-137 sample and then another couple samples of the same, approximately the same activity. Now, I mean, they're plus or minus 20% on their activity, but we're not looking for that. What I'm looking for is to show you that two different activities, two, uh, sorry, two different samples with approximately the same activity have a drastically different response from the Geiger counter, right? Now, if this is measured against cesium-137 and if it's acceptable to use energy units, we just switch this into microsieverts prior with something else, then there shouldn't be that much variation. Oops, I hit the camera. So let's pull this off and let's take out cesium-137. 
Let's put these in here and move it away so it doesn't affect the um, results too much. Okay, but what we're looking for is the difference between one and the other, so we don't really care so much if the results are off as long as they're equally in error. Because the purpose of this isn't like, to actually get the information from this, just to show you the disparity between the two. I'm going to use a bottle cap. Why? Because I like bottle caps. How scientific is that? All right, so you see there's nothing in the bottle cap. Oh, let me see if you can see this. This is a one microcurie, which is 37 kilobecquerels of a sample. Put that right there. And it's fresh as of 2011, which means there's a little bit of decay that I have to calculate, but realistically for cesium-137 and 30-year half-life, that's not very much. So take a genuine Pyrex, Pyrex uh, uh, Petri dish there. Actually, hold on a second, is the bottom better? Yeah, the bottom's a little better. So let's use the bottom. Take a Geiger counter, nothing weird. And put that flat, flat and flush. It actually kind of wiggles a little bit, so let's get that on there. All right, well, let's make sure that you can read what it says. Okay, good, you can click that on. Now you might say, why am I doing this with the Petri dish? Well, it's blocking beta. I have the beta cap on and I have the Petri dish piece on here. And realistically, as long as I use the exact same setup, exact same setup for the next isotope I test, then it doesn't really matter because whatever disparity there is, it will be equal for both. Now, we are reading six microsieverts per hour from the sample. 6.2 will give it a little while to stabilize. Just out of curiosity, what's the CDV700 think? Oops. All right, so 6.3, 6.2. We can say that 6.2 to 6.3 is about the, how many microsieverts per hour we're getting off of basically gamma only. So this is actually approximately right because I usually calculate about 12 microsieverts per hour from a 37 kilobecquerel source when I do it mathematically on the board. And we're saying half of the sample because the other half's going into the ground. So that sort of adds up, doesn't it? I mean, ballparking. So 6.2 to 6.3. Let's take you off. Now let's get Europium-152. This guy's even more highly calibrated, 95% cal cal uh, uh, accuracy in fact. There it is. Actually calibrated against a NIST traceable source. Not bad for mixed gamma. Let's get that right on there. Don't want to move it too much. I mean, I guess a millimeter or two doesn't matter, but try to get that about the same. Let's put the season 137 away. Now, so, 2.3 to 2.2, somewhere in there, right? Oh, who cares if the sample's off by just a little bit? Who even cares? Because look at that. That's not even close. The same activity, plus or minus, even if the activity were double, it wouldn't account for such a disparity. Now, what's going on here is the europium produces tremendously more gammas. It has gammas all over the place. It has x-rays, it has gammas, all kinds of them. Different energies, some higher, some lower. The Geiger tube isn't compensated, so we're probably going to pick... Some of this is actually probably the result of the Geiger tube not being energy compensated. And I should point out, energy compensation on a Geiger tube actually can reduce a lot of what I'm talking about, so I'll give it that. But in general, even that being the case, the doses are not the same. So if you're in a post-nuclear, like nuclear bomb or nuclear meltdown environment where cesium-137 is one of the most predominant things, like Fukushima or whatnot, or you know, the bad guys detonate a nuke or something, then yes, using energy units is actually not a bad idea because that's actually going to be pretty accurate. But if uh, the bad guys don't detonate one, if they were to put off like a dirty one or something, or if you found contamination somewhere or something you didn't know what it was, it might not be a good idea. Because as you can see, they aren't equal. And in fact, now that we've concluded our basic test, let's try another isotope. Let's see what else do we have here. 
sodium 22. Again, 37 kiloback rolls of sodium 22. What does it come out as? You put the other ones away. There. Don't want them to affect. Hmm, look at that. Nowhere near. So much for 6.2 or 6.3. Let's put this on times 100. So now we're at 0, 10,000, 20,000, 30,000. I'm just curious what it'll go to when it comes near the sodium 22. Okay, yeah, I think I pretty much made my case. Hard over. <laughs> Can't even measure it with this thing. And for that matter, just for fun, since you watched, of course, we know now that this dose rate is not accurate. 183 microsieverts per hour. 1,015 counts per second? Not bad, huh? Not bad at all. But anyhow, I like to put them all together, but I'm not allowed to. You're not allowed to mix them together and test them. It's against some random rule. This has been Tom from anti-proton.com. Remember, counts per minute, counts per second, counts per minute, counts per second, counts per minute, counts per second.